Good day and greetings from the Great White North. My name is Perkley Poo and welcome to day nine of A Year of Change. Today we're going to talk about um, the tracking that we've been doing uh, since yesterday. And I'm just sort of going to share a few things that I noticed uh, have a tendency to sort of creep in when we're doing these things um, and things that really should be avoided while we're tracking all this stuff just to sort of keep everybody on point and make sure that, you know, we're being honest to ourselves and to each other so that, you know, things aren't hidden, we don't get lost in what we're doing, and more importantly, we don't lie to ourselves like we have been in the past. So um, I, I've said it before that I've used the MyFitnessPal app in the past, um, and it does help quite a bit. The, you know, the only issue was just my own willpower not sticking with it. Um, but there are a few things that I found tend to creep in, um, which sort of spells the beginning of the end. And, you know, usually only start coming in when you get to a point where you're not actually going to do it anymore. Um, just different ways that you can make an excuse for yourself and things like that. So hopefully, you know, these are going to be things that we can avoid right from the onset. So the first thing is um, not tracking accurately. Now, a lot of the stuff that we're going to be doing throughout the like throughout this entire program does rely on knowing exactly what we're putting into our bodies so if you run into something um, I mean the majority of things that are in a package or something like that you're gonna be able just to scan the package if you have the app and or you, you know or do the math yourself and figure out how many calories are in there um, it's when we start adding things um, you know, not counting them or having a little something here and a little something there and not adding those little little additions that things start creeping in. For example, if you bought um, like a frozen pizza and on the back it says however many calories for a slice of pizza, um, you know, you can do the math and try to figure out, okay, if I have six slices all mapped out, then each slice is going to be this much. But then if you're adding, you know, additional cheese to it, and then you think, well, it's probably, you know, 25 grams or whatever it is. But you know you've put on an entire block on there. You know, trying to do those additions, um, you know, make sure that those are being included. Because it's very easy to sort of skip over them or forgo them. Because you think, oh, it's, it's an extra 20 or 30 calories. But those do add up in the run of a day. And especially during the run of a week, you know, they're going to add up to, you know, an entire meal. Um, same thing with little tidbits here and there. If, uh, you know, you're out somewhere and you grab a quick snack, even if it's nothing major, um, even if it's something like an apple, um, you know, if it's a fairly large apple, there's 100, 150 calories in there that, you know, you might think, well, it's, it's something small, it's insignificant, I'm not going to put it in. But we do need to make sure that, you know, as you have been the last week, that we're tracking absolutely everything just so that we don't end up in that sort of trap where we'll go, well, it doesn't count, so we'll have one here and then one there, and you know, because it's very easy to go, especially with something like like candies or something. Um, if you say, well, there's you know 100 calories in a package, but it, I'm only going to have one or two. But when you pick on that throughout the day, you know, then it, it does add up. So um, I found that when I started doing that, when I started looking at things and going, oh, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't count, or you know, it's so insignificant, I'm not going to take the time to add to it. That was when I started getting to a point where I wasn't going to actually continue on the way that I should. So that's sort of one of the dangers that you should look out for that, you know, if you can, right from the onset, if you can do this properly, you're going to have a much better chance of sticking with it. Um, now, we have a lot of leeway because we aren't tracking liquids yet. So, um, you know, if you find that you're, you know, really hungry and you do want something, that you don't want to track, um, grab, you know, a glass of juice or chocolate milk or a can of pop, whatever it is that you normally would drink, you know, and go for, go for that. It's still not great. Um, and technically you're still going to end up going over your number for the day, but that's not our focus right now. So although it isn't really free for the time being, you can treat that as something that those are going to be free calories because the majority of what you're drinking there is water and then the other additions. Um, once we do start tracking that, you're going to see, you know, that there's a lot of cases where the liquid is worse than the food. Um, really high calories, they don't fill you up, tremendous amount of sugar, even in stuff that's supposed to be natural. Um, but again, that's, that's a worry for another time. So for right now, if you get to a point where 
you know, you you are hungry and you don't want your you know close to your number for the day. Grab something to drink for the time being. Um, even if it's to tide you over until midnight, and then at midnight grab something and track that for the next day. Um, I know this sort of sounds like cheating, but you know technically it's still going midnight to midnight, so you'd still be okay. So that's the main thing. Is just sort of again, this is just sort of reinforcing the pattern that we got into last week of tracking everything, except now we have a goal. So as long as we can stay beneath that number without you know cheating or you know skipping over some calories that we ate, then then we're doing well. So um, the other thing that sometimes I found would sneak in is underestimating the amount that you're the calories that you're eating. Um, when you have something like, um, I don't know, a handful of chocolates, if you don't have a real tangible amount of calories to it, um, it's very easy to underestimate what you're putting in. So if you run into a situation like that where you aren't quite sure you know, how much is in there, take a look at the app. Go in, get something that's close to it, and just like weigh, when you, we weigh ourselves and we do the three measurements and we take the highest number, take a look at four or five different entries that are in there for that type of food and grab one that not necessarily is the highest, but the one that you honestly believe is the most accurate. Because it's, you know as well as I do, it's very easy and very convenient to fool ourselves, which is what got us in this mess in the first place. So if you're running into something and it says, you know, okay, a small chocolate of 10 grams is, you know, 90 calories or whatever. You're not going to know how much it is that you're eating, but you can sort of take a rough estimate, you know, as to how much it's probably going to be. And if you need to, it's always better to overestimate so that, I mean, even if it, you're at a, at a point where you're very, very close to your target, it's always better to overestimate and say, okay, I, I you know, I may not have gone over my number, but I probably did instead of cutting back and saying, nope, I'm still under my goal, when deep down inside you know that you went over it. Because um, it's going to be much easier to sort of recover from going over the number than it is to recover from getting into that rut that we've been in before, where we lie to ourselves and say, you know, it's not things aren't that bad. So, you know, it's basically, again, just sort of getting to that point where we track things accurately and honestly, and that we track absolutely everything that you're putting in. Um, and, you know, again, if you don't have the exact measurements, overestimate. Because the number that you have for your goal, um, unless you were in a situation, uh, I mentioned this yesterday, that if you're in a situation where you're consistently gaining, then it is going to be a pretty significant drop in the amount of calories that you have. Um, but for the vast majority of you that are out there, um, losing two pounds a week is not that difficult, and so the numbers will reflect that. You'll find that uh, you might get, you know, the munchies every now and then, but you're never going to get to a point when you're just ravenous and that you need something right now. Um, because it's so slow and gradual that you're pretty much putting that amount, you know, into yourself anyway. And especially where we aren't tracking liquids, you have all that to sort of fall back on to go into. So once we start tracking liquids and stuff, then things will sort of get a little tighter. But again, we want to maintain the, the momentum that we picked up last week in the tracking and, you know, just have this one little tweak for that. Um, and next week we're going to, you know, add some more stuff to it as well. So things will get a little bit better. But that's it for now. Um, I'm working on trying to get something that, so that we have sort of a little bit of a schedule each week. Um, I've... I'm going to be doing some stuff, uh, you know, aside from just the regular topics that we talk about, uh, some alternatives for snacking. Because, I mean, for the lot, for a lot of us, you know, we do have, or you are going to have those cravings where you're going to want something salty or sugary or something like that. And so we're going to look at some alternatives for that. Nothing really stupid like, you know, oh, have a rice cake or have a stick of celery. Because that's not what we want. That's not what we're craving. It's going to be stuff that is going to be good. Um... It's not great. It's certainly not, you know, vegetables and fruits and stuff like that. But it's a hell of a lot better than going for a chocolate bar. So, you know, little things like that. Um, you know, share some more of my embarrassing stories that I have. And I've got quite a few. 
Um, the one this week is about icing, and it's kind of gross, but you'll get a kick out of it. So um, I'm just going to sort of work on things like that, see if we can, you know, not necessarily have something so that, okay, well, every Friday is going to be this, and every Wednesday is going to be that. Just something that will keep us on track so that, you know, there is a natural progression and there's stuff that you can look forward to. Um, like I said, last week was really, really heavy topic-wise, so we're going to try to sort of lighten the mood. And we will talk about a few things, you know, that do affect us, um, you know, and some are going to be a little heavier than others, like a healthcare system or, um, you know, a fat tax that they want to put on stuff. And other ones are just going to be, you know, a little more light and hopefully keep us on track. Um, the main thing is that you have someone here every day that you can go to and you've got something a little new that you can listen to and that you know will keep us going together as a group so that there's always someone there that you're going to be able to you know, sort of relate to um, and just it's nice to have someone that's doing the same thing that you're doing so but that's it for now uh, thank you very much for watching this video if you liked it please poke the like button for me and in the meantime stay warm and fuzzy and i'll see you in the next video bye bye